All the time when I happen to purchase an orchid from any kind of big box store, I wonder why the sellers or growers pack them like that. I might have an answer, but for now let's just assume that the seller is trying to save space and money. Although these orchids look very elegant and presentable to be purchased as a gift, this fancy packaging definitely is not good or in any way beneficial for your orchid. I can assure you that if you leave your new orchid in this pot, it won't last long. And that this is also the main reason behind all those comments regarding orchids dying shortly after being brought home from the store. I am urging you to take these steps that I'm going to present to you in this video to ensure your new plant some longevity. If you think it is appropriate to leave your orchid as is very soon, maybe around a week or so, you'll notice that some of the flowers will dry out prematurely and leaves will begin to develop yellowish spots. After maybe another week or two, your orchids might lose the crown or some leaves and shortly after, if you don't do anything, it will end up in the wastebasket. So what is the reason behind severe orchid crown rot? One of the main reasons is because of root suffocation. But before we get into that, let's talk about orchid roots. These are very common Phalaenopsis orchids that grow in nature as epiphytes, meaning above the ground, using for support trees, rocks, and roofs. Most of the orchids generally have very special air roots, aerial roots, not tightly packed in plastic roots. But what makes these aerial roots so special? The green color of roots indicates that the orchid is participating in the process of photosynthesis, and it is simple proof that they can perfectly replace leaves. Orchid roots are covered with velamen. In dry condition, velamen is a dusty white green color, and when the velamen becomes wet, the color of the orchid roots changes to green. This happens because velamen resembles a porous sponge and can absorb water like one. When velamen absorbs water, we're able to see through the velamen layer green chloroplasts inside the root cortex cells. Orchid root cortex is a thick layers of cells responsible for photosynthesis, production and transport of moisture and sugar throughout the central cord or vascular cylinder to the leaves. This is how velamen looks under the microscope. These are elongated cells with an uneven edge and are represented by several layers of dead cells of the rhizoderm. This fact makes orchid roots function to be very different from root absorbing function of higher plants. Orchid roots cannot be placed into water or soil or some other nonsense substrate widely advertised. Orchid roots have to be exposed to air. When water enters the root surface, for example, during rain or condenses at a high humidity, the dry velum and membranes capturing moisture, they swell, and then the moisture penetrates by capillary path, displacing the air penetrating through the passage cells, passes all layers into the vascular cylinder. The vascular cylinder is the very string that remains in the form of a dry straw after the death of the roots. The moisture already received and the sugar formed in the process of photosynthesis rises up to the storage leaves and peduncles passing through the vascular cylinder. Now, knowing what I have just told you, Imagine how these roots feel to be jammed in such a tiny plastic pot cover. Yeah, exactly. Your roots are slowly suffocating. And depending on how much you like to water your plants in this condition, without draining holes, your new orchid will be very, very sick very shortly after purchase. Aerial roots need only one thing. Normal and sufficient humid air circulation around. Same as in their natural outside, their natural tropical environment. Exactly that factor we don't have in our homes, and that makes our orchids grow slowly and suffer. But this fancy big box store package makes conditions 10 times worse and unacceptable for an orchid's normal growing condition. After I purchased these orchids, I immediately cut them open, removed all of the cellophane, and cut and removed the orchids from the plastic so that they can breathe and get some air circulation. Normally, sellers sell them in bark or sphagnum moss substrate. Moss can absorb 15 times more than that of their own weight. If orchids are watered at the store or garden centers, that water will stay inside due to practically no drainage or air circulation. It's up to you what media you want to grow your orchids in. Either one will be okay, but I personally prefer moss for many good reasons. 
I have to repot my new orchids in wider containers and spread some of the top roots outside of the pot, like a backup, in case some of the roots on the inside rot due to my overwatering mistakes. The roots on the outside won't let my orchids rot. I will plant one in a plastic pot with lots of drainage holes and another in a ceramic pot with saucer and drainage holes, and we'll see which one performs better. But if I wish to go further and create an even healthier, more close to the natural environment, I can find a wide, large glass vase, put some aquarium gravel or river rocks at the bottom of it. I sometimes use a small piece of bark or branches to elevate the orchid slightly above to again prevent the orchid roots from getting into the water. I lay the bottom with fresh, live sphagnum moss that I grow myself. I'd add just a little bit of osmosis water at the bottom. We have a video on our channel about how to grow moss. The link is in the description, so if you're interested, please check that out. I basically created like a mini terrarium for single orchids. I use the same method to rehabilitate orchids with other problems or to stimulate the growth of new roots or leaves. Except I just lay the orchid on top of the moss pillow and they regrow roots inside the moss. We have a lot of videos about orchid revival and rehabilitation and people ask for updates as well. So here's a short rehabilitation update. Just about a few months ago, I placed these plants almost without leaves or roots, just on top of a fresh growing sphagnum moss. As you can see, fresh, shiny, young leaves and bundles of new roots grew on the small orchid. Orchid even deepened its roots into the gravel zone. It looks pretty healthy, and I'm waiting hopefully for some flower spikes by spring. And the second one is also getting bigger, and it also looks very healthy with a bunch of young roots that deeply buried themselves into the moss. The moss is still alive, although some parts look decomposed. So my method definitely works with success simply because it resembles as close as possible to the natural environment and it provides sufficient air circulation and high levels of moisture. All of this makes a troubled orchid resume growing new leaves and roots.